Hey everyone, welcome to Flirting with Travel. I'm Misty. I'm Lexi. Hi. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about Lexi's best trips, her top five out of her 30 by 30. Mm -hmm. So, easy question. First question What were your top five trips? I'm just going to preface this where it's very difficult to find top five because you're looking at different things that make a trip amazing. Right. But in general, the trips that come to mind when I think about like my best trips are going to be London, Rome. I was there. Yeah, in London. Yeah, that's why it's the best top five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, on. is that why? Because Rome, I was so low. Just, yeah, I wasn't there. Go just on. living on my own. <laughs> Taipei. Wasn't there either. Yeah. Oh, waiting for that. <laughs> Cuba. I was there. Guys, I was there. And, and Bruges. Oh, guess what? I was there too. <laughs> I did top three, I guess. Okay. I mean, three, so, five. What is their criteria for top five? Like, well, how did you choose these five? Because you said it's mm. hard to pick. Well, it's almost impossible to pick because there's not like one thing that's going to make an amazing trip. Uh -huh. So my top five were really about the feeling that I got while there, mm -hmm. the memories that I took back, and how much that trip aligned with the time and place of my life. Okay, so, let's see, you said Bruges. Mm -hmm. Well, should we go oldest to newest or newest to oldest? Which ones, or do you want to top, at least said there's not a top one. There's definitely no order. So that is literally the list in no particular order. Well, maybe London would take top pick, okay. and then the rest are just scattered because they're just all amazing. Okay, so talk about London. Why was it amazing? That trip was perfection to me. Okay. I I know it's perfection. that's that is high regards to give a trip, but I felt like it was amazing from the people aspect. We were on a girls' mm -hmm. trip of five people um, for my twenty seventh birthday. Mm -hmm. So you, me, um, my friend Sarah, my friend Sharon, and your friend Tracy. Right. No, granted, this is the first time, like, we had all traveled together. My first time meeting Tracy, your first time meeting Sharon. It was, yes. Right? Yes. And yet somehow we all got together and it just, it meshed. Like, all of the personalities tempered out. There was no one that was too much, no one that was too little. It was perfect. Right. Then, London as a city is amazing. Mm -hmm. One, museums are free. And how cool is that? Because they have amazing museums. Was it free without the card? Mm -hmm. All of their national... So you didn't have to get a card? No, we got the card for the churches and the transportation. Okay. So like on our first day there, we got the card, but it helped us get free buses and trains and subways. Okay. Which yes. we took a lot of public transportation. So like that by itself would have paid for it, but it also gave us... Um, it was either half off or buy one, get one free at a lot yeah. of the churches. So we used it at like St. Paul's Cathedral, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but there was just so much to see and do there. The food was good, which is crazy because I was expecting to just be entirely underwhelmed by it. But I actually enjoyed almost everything I had, except like the, uh, the very traditional stack snacks that Sarah kept on trying to feed us at night. Scottish eggs grow on you. Do they? Yeah, was it Yorkshire pudding? Yorkshire pudding yeah. is just weird. It's like, it's like a pastry that deflated. Like, <laughs> I don't even understand why they're so, like, in love with it. Yeah. And then you put some bland-ass gravy on it. I assume it's just things you grow up with and you love. Right. But... Oh, what was the other thing that they liked? The crump... Crump? Crumpets? Crumpet? Like the pancake English muffin thing? Yeah. And then you had that with the, um, the butter, like, salted butter or something. Yeah. They... There was a word for the butter. It was... Okay... Okay, so London top, did you plan that out? Because you said you're a planner. Intensely. Yeah. I planned that out intensely. I, the way she just said, yeah. Yeah, it was like 6 o'clock wake-up calls. No, no. Okay, first of all, everyone got woken up at 7. Mind you, I was waking up at 6 every day doing right. an hour of work on my uh, laptop and then would wake everyone up at 7 and we would get ready right. to be out of the door by 8. Yes. Right. Now... It was not regimented. If we were out by 8, we could go do stuff. So planning for this trip was 
It was an intensive process because beforehand I had an opportunity to talk to everyone with the exception of really Tracy mm -hmm. and see like, what do you like? What do you want to do? So like for you, while we were there, your priority was you wanted to see black violin in concert. True. And it just happened to be that they were going to be in London while we were there. I was like, well, we get those tickets. We right, do that. Right. Sarah was really excited about the Natural History Museum and seeing like the bones of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. Sharon was super excited about... Um, Stonehenge, she was very psyched for that. <laughs> Stonehenge is really just a pile of stones. <laughs> it was, but it ended up being a great day. 18 hours outside of London. You know what, but Bath was worth it. That was the unexpected portion of that. It was like, yeah. really, it was like, you know what, I see you like Bruges. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Bath would have rival Bruges? Because it was like, there's a sleepy town, yes. right? You just walk around. Chill. And that's what it was. It's like this perfect little old town that had like Roman baths in it and right. they very creatively named it mm -hmm. Bath. Mm -hmm. And it was just so calm and relaxing. Like you stroll around there and we went to the church or at least we saw the outside of it. Yeah. We did lunch. It was just perfectly chill compared to everything else that we did. Right. And it was just like a wonderful counterbalance because like, let's see, one of Actually, the first day in London, we literally hopped off of our 10 or 11 hour flight, mm -hmm. went to drop our bags off and didn't even change. We, like, our group, we left right back out. I know you guys had gotten there, so maybe you had time to, like, shower and relax. We did. We had the split pea soup that was delicious mm -hmm. at this warehouse thing down the street. Oh, well, no. Because we stayed in Hackney Wick, which is actually funny because it's a gentrified neighborhood. So I'm it like, totally oh, is. my God, it's amazing. And then I come home and I go back and I'm like, oh, it was so nice. We stayed in Hackney Wick. And they're just like, if you talk to a Londoner, like, that's like the hood. Oh, but it like, no, that house was awesome. It was like, what, four mm -hmm. bedrooms, two yeah. bathrooms. With a um, cute courtyard. Oh, it was so adorable because the entire back wall opened up. And granted, you're in, like, a neighborhood, so we were maybe making a lot of noise. Like, not partying, but just chatting. However, I don't know. I think the house in the neighborhood was super adorable. Um, but then, like, we literally dropped right. off our bags and ran back out to start the itinerary. Because the first night, we went straight to uh, the National Museum. Oh, we did. Mm -hmm. I want to say that one of the reasons that you're high-paced... 16 items a day itinerary could actually be successful was because of how amazing the transportation was in London. Oh, that Bar made a done, probably the top transportation system in the world. You know, I have feelings about the transportation, particularly <laughs> when my group put me off the train. Oh. I, no, what happened was you decided to get off the train. No. And then I'm, not alert anybody that you were leaving. And so as you were leaving... I didn't even realize you were out until the doors were closed. And I was like, oh, shit, there's my sister. <laughs> you want to talk about the web of lies? I'm the one who's doing all the transportation. I say, hey, guys, it looks like this is our stop. I hop off. I turn back around. And all four of you are still sitting there, except Sarah, who's pushing the closed door button on me. <laughs> she might have thought it was open. I was sure, like, oh, my sure. God. Imagine if that happened like 10 years ago when you didn't have an international data plan. Well, I mean, it would have been kind of devastating, but I thought I was doing the smart thing. I thought, they're going to wait for me there, hop on the next train in two minutes, and go ahead. Right. But apparently you guys got to your station and thought, okay, we're going to hop on the train going back and meet her. Well, both of these are common sense, though. No, they are. They totally are. But then I realized we're deep underground, and I had no cell reception, so I thought, just go upstairs before we just keep on going back and forth. Right, and then we just met at the museum. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I'm not going back down there and getting on this train. I'll make my way there. So if you had to recommend for somebody who's never been to London, but mm -hmm. it is on their bucket list, what are the top two things in London that you would say go do? Ooh, that is challenging, because there was so much... I really so enjoyed a midnight summer dream. Oh, I thought that was a yeah. Cool I thought it was nice to see it. It was funny. And we got to see it in like the uh, recreation yes. of the Globe Theater, right. which is where like Shakespeare would have actually had his plays. Exactly. So that was awesome. Those chairs were uncomfortable. So my recommendation for that would also be buy the cushions. I didn't want to. What? Then what do you do with the cushion? You put it under your seat so you're not sitting on that hard wood. Yes, but after you leave, what do you do with the cushion? Oh, you don't buy it. You're like renting it. It's, oh, so if I'm like being honest, I was like super cheap because it was only like three extra pounds. And I thought, no, we've spent enough. We can sit on this wood. <laughs> I, okay, I feel bad. So that's my option. It. What were your two? What were your two things? Well, okay. Um, 
high tea. So we did. A, oh, that was really dope. For we did a bit. tea time at. It was like floor fifty one, and it was on like the fifty first floor, and looking out, right. and it would be hard to recreate the day because it was like perfectly drizzly, not rainy, just right. kind of gray, and you're looking over the River Thames with um, what is their wheel called? Melinda and I. Yep, okay. in the background, <laughs> and. You, you knew what I was talking about. Yes, I had to think about it. Again. No, but like that was just, it was, and the food was so good. It was, it was really good. And there was champagne, there was tea, it was just everything I needed. And that was like on my actual birthday, so that was like the best birthday. So that would be something I would definitely recommend. Uh -huh. The other, hmm. Oh, we'll put a pen in it. Oh, you know what? Oh, St. Yeah. Paul's Cathedral. <laughs> I know for us, it was like kind what of traumatizing. You see one cathedral, you've seen them all. They're beautiful. It was beautiful. But really? I think what you got was the, the unexpected walk. stairs. No, I think that was a unique cathedral though. Because like, say you're comparing it to um, Italian cathedrals and Italian right. uh, churches and whatnot. They are, they're so ornate and like gold and mm -hmm. paintings and mm -hmm. everything there. And then you go into like St. Paul's and it was more austere and it had a really different feel to it and then you have where you can climb up to like 320 steps which is fine when you're on like the initial steps that are nice and like just Cemented not wide. yeah so you could do the whisper halls or whatever they're called yes but then once you got to like the narrow stairs that were spiral and metal with like no backing right. and that you just felt shaking as you were walking like I mean, it was traumatizing, but it was also traumatizing in a way that just got your adrenaline up. You were, it was just moving through you. Yeah, I have whole panic attacks. I, I know, I never felt more attacks. alive. No, never. It wasn't, that wasn't the issue. I literally <laughs> wanted to crawl downstairs. I wasn't, <laughs> never felt more alive. Okay. No, so I mean, I did have a moment where those spiral stairs, they, they freaked me out. And I thought, I'm just going to start walking back down. No. And someone's like, no, you can't walk back down. And I was like, I will kick down these stairs anyone who tries to stop you me couldn't, you had to go up up to the top of the thing <laughs> and you realize that you're on top of this cement thing that was built 18 years like thousand years ago and it's like i just wouldn't i couldn't oh because the floor was tilting downward like that freaked me out but you know what got me I just hugged the wall. is that none of us had phones and nobody got pictures. Imagine you climbed up 800 stairs, literal, not exaggerated, to not even capture the view. That is what it felt like in the 50s of travel. Well, I know it was downright dumb, but it's because they told you you couldn't take pictures inside the church. And I would like to say we were super respectful of that. So we didn't even take our phones because we thought, well, we can't take pictures. Right. And then suddenly you're outside on this... And I'm going to tell you, it was an amazing view. I, I assume you weren't looking at it. No, I, I looked at the wall and my hands hugging it to walk across. Oh, hearing Sarah tell the story, she's like, I just heard her on the other side crying and I was trying to get to her, but I didn't want to go outside. <laughs> I sure walked by. I was like, don't leave me. <laughs> okay, so those top two things mm -hmm. that is a must do you have to do it you mm -hmm. have to do it it's so worth it i know we're not making it sound great when we talk about how everyone had freak outs but it was so yeah, it's, fun it's, a really, it's the best view in london i think mm -hmm. so okay your next city was bruges i loved bruges so i think that came at like a high stress point in my life that was last year last november 2018 it was it was, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. and so like I had gone to, we had both gone to Amsterdam before and literally before you got into Amsterdam, I like hit five museums in a day. I'm like, I'm at the Botanical Gardens. Two hours later, I'm here, I'm there. I was like running that city for a bit. Yeah. And then we continued to have like a really fast paced time in Amsterdam. And then when we got to Bruges, it was just like, skirt, pump the brakes. And now we just get to enjoy. I think we set up about three different walking tours that we didn't make it to. The nighttime walking tours. Well, because I was tired. No, it's the daytime walking tours too. We had one that was going to be in the afternoon. Uh -huh. And then we sat down and started eating cheese and drinking beer. And we thought, well, this is nice. We'll just stay here. And we literally saw like our Watch tour pass <laughs> us. And I was like, well, that's okay. But it was, a, it was from the 16th century. Mm -hmm. Cobblestone throughout. Um, beautiful. Just Historic. I think you could feel the, not the mm -hmm. oldness of the city, but you could almost feel like the... The history of yeah, it. Yeah, it was like texture. You, it's like walking in and feeling yes. something that's bumpy. And you're just like, 
it's just chill. It's just the Zen moment of it. And you felt all of it, even the moment you drove in. So like we got in by train from Amsterdam and took the taxi and it was the moment you, you hit the building, you're like, oh, I feel like I've just stepped back in time. Right. I think that's what it is. You just feel the, you can respect it because everything is old there. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing new. And then like the food was awesome. So like we had the Belgian waffles, which were great. Chocolate. Oh my goodness. Basically a self-guided walking chocolate tour. We just walked from chocolate place to chocolate place and just kept on buying stuff and eating stuff. By the time I had the hot chocolate, I realized I drink like no water, which is a running theme on a lot of my vacations. That's because you don't factor in lunch, you don't factor in dinner. Well, I mean, we had chocolate. It's kind of like a coffee thing. Yeah. Although, like, that was another food mishap was the, uh, that fancy dinner that we did. The where oysters, yeah. Yes. And I'm not normally an oyster eater, but I was like, you know, we're in Bruges. We're going to have some oysters. Right. Because the Belgian <laughs> thing is the mussels. And French fries. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Belgian fries. Now, that was good. Those oysters, though, they took me out of the game. I started sweating, like, within five minutes of eating them. I thought I just had on too many layers, so literally go to the bathroom to try and unburden myself. (laughs) I had on... She like, taking layer upon layer off. She had, like, five layers on, because it's cold. It was cold. It was. So I had, like, leggings on under my jeans, and I thought, that's fine. I'm just going to take these off. I only have a fanny pack with me, so I'm just carrying a bundle of clothes back to the table thinking, okay, maybe I feel a bit better right. now. We got, like, halfway through dinner, and I thought, I, I've got to get out of here. I can't be here. And then on the way back, didn't you start getting sick? Then and I got really, really sick. I, got, I think it was unbalanced uh, oysters, guys. Unbalanced, horrible, from the fucking sea brim of the side of the barge. It was horrible. Like, I was dry heaving. But the funny thing is, you wouldn't throw up. Like, you're walking by this church, church. <laughs> and I'm like, just let it go. No one can see you right now. No, not in front of God. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I got to the bathroom and just died. It was horrid. Okay, yeah. so that what I mean, there was really not anything that you could do there. You could do, like, the canal cruise. That was nice. The canal cruise was nice. I think that's what was amazing about it is that if I had done an entire, like, just trip of Bruges, I might not have felt the same way. But coming from basically, like, high pace, yeah. yeah, just stressed, and then, like, another fast-paced vacation in Amsterdam, and then getting there and thinking, well, now I can breathe, mm-hmm. it just settled me in a way that very few trips have. I felt so content. And that's a similar feeling that I had in London. Like, I had a moment where I just felt everything is right there's nothing i would change about anything that's happening and how how is that not your favorite when you just feel like all my stars have aligned so what elements do you think make the best trips for you you said it depends on what you're going on and mm-hmm. going through in life mm-hmm. and then what else did you say well it really is about time and place so like bruges was perfect because i was living a hectic life and that just slowed it down mm-hmm. now let's go with Taipei, that city is energetic, and it just really fed into where I was then, because I was 22 or 23 at the Mm -hmm. time, and living a life overseas, I had just come home for the first time in two years Mm -hmm. after being in Japan, Mm -hmm. Um, come home because mom was sick, and it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, I just had so much energy in me, and then when I went to Taipei, it felt like the city was just matching my energy. It was quick, it was fast paced, Mm -hmm. but then it also had those times where you could slow down in the same way that Amsterdam and Bruges had. Like one day you're walking around the city seeing what used to be um, Mm -hmm. building like 101, used to be the tallest building in the world, stopped in, had like the most amazing food. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been to Din Tai Fung? Mm-mm. Oh, so good. It's um soup, soup dumplings. Okay. And it was phenomenal. So we did that. We're wandering around. Um, and then we decide, oh, we're just going to take a bus, go up to the mountains and, like, enjoy some tea. So let me stop you. Mm-hmm. Where is Taipei? Because it's not a, that's definitely not a common location that most okay. people even venture to. So Taipei is the capital city of Taiwan, which is right next to China. Taiwan actually used to belong to China or be a part of China, but they've asserted their independence. So they asserted their independence or they actually are independent? um, Well, China 
considers them part of them, and Taiwan considers them independent. So it really depends on who you're asking. So similarly to Hong Kong. Yes, although Hong Kong at least like they're independent, but they also acknowledge that they're part of China. Whereas like Taiwan is really serious. I think we were buying、um, these T-shirts, and a guy was like, "Oh, these are made in Taiwan." And I was like, "Okay." I thought it was like, "Oh, made in the、right. USA." They're like, "No, it's not made in China. It's made in Taiwan." I was like, "So it's, okay, it's still on mainland China, like right next to it, yeah, but on the water." Okay, so it's coastal. Yes, it's not an island. Well, shit. Now I feel like I need to check a map. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to. I actually don't know where Taiwan is. I mean, I've seen、Man. it, but I'm not like I can't recollect where it is. So I'm just, you know, for the. For I'm the like listeners... 98% certain I've seen it on a map, and now I don't know if it's coastal or an island. And you've shaken my confidence. <laughs> it's、I'm... tiny, though. I mean, it's it easy. It is. But that's what I'm saying. So, like, okay, Taiwan is one of your. Taipei is up there, one of your top trips, and that's like a place that. I mean that has not hit Instagram and it's not on flirting、mm-hmm. with travel or not flirting with travel. It is actually it's on right now. Right. And、um, it's not on Facebook. Oh, and it should be. So I feel like that's a place that should be up and coming because it's cheap to go to.、Mm-hmm. Um, they do have public transportation. They have a lot of history, like really interesting architecture and buildings.、Uh-huh. The food, like. Aside from the、uh, soup dumplings, generally they have like a night market. You walk out and it just smells amazing. It's all mouthwatering food. Right. I mean, some of it is mouthwatering, some of it is not. There is、um, <laughs> a specialty there called stinky tofu. Right. And I thought before、Which、I got there. Tofu. Yeah. Extra little funk in it. Yeah, and they, they're like, oh, it's just something you eat here. And I thought, well, I'm definitely going to try this stinky、uh-huh. tofu because why wouldn't I try something unique in a place? And then we're out at the night market, and we're walking by, and I'm smelling like these chicken—I want to call them kebabs, but I'm pretty sure they weren't. <laughs> Something of the sort. And it's like, oh, that's amazing. And then I just walk forward like three steps, and I hit a wall, and this smell assaults me. It smells like a sewer, like an open sewer sitting in the sun, boiling, that just ran free in the streets. Next to the chicken. Yes, right next to the chicken, and it was amazing because that chicken smelled phenomenal. And then you just walk forward, and you're like, "What just changed? <laughs> Where'd the chicken go?" Right. That was the chicken's head down there. <laughs> yeah, and so I look to my friend I'm traveling with. I'm like, "What is that? Where's this bathroom that smells like this?" Right. And he's like, "No, that's the stinky tofu." I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna try that." You didn't want to try the stinky tofu. You said that you were gonna try the stinky tofu. No, no. I said I was gonna try it until I realized that it smelled like sewage, and then I realized I would just as soon vomit as I would try that tofu. Maybe it's just the smell of the salt, and the tofu itself wasn't that bad. Possibly, but I don't think I could have walked any closer. I literally had to hightail it away from that stall. So, were there any tourists in there eating? You know what? The, so. Tourism there is weird because I didn't see like a bunch of Americans or even Europeans. So I think they get more of like um, the like、Asians、yeah.、Are. And so with that, they probably were like locals and tourists. But if I'm being honest, I don't know if I could have discerned like who's there as a tourist because you didn't see a bunch of people like oh I'm carrying my big camera with me.、Mm-hmm. It was just a bunch of people walking around eating, which was nice. Okay. So, in your list,、mm-hmm. do any, did any of them have horrible food? No, they all had good food, which is amazing because I typically don't prioritize food on vacation, as you well know.、Right. I never plan it in,、yeah. and if I'm having a great time, I usually don't even remember to eat. So, but in all these locations you've named so far, food has been one of the things you have done. So, I. I'll put it like this: I like happy surprises, and that's what the food tends to be. Like Sustenance ha- every now and then. <laughs> no, it's just like a happy surprise. Like, oh my goodness, this is amazing! I wasn't even looking for good food, and I've stumbled across good food. Okay, so we've talked about food. We've talked about、um, itineraries with culture, things to do,、mm-hmm. uh, transportation,、mm-hmm. because Taipei had good transportation, London had good transportation. Bruges was a walkable city, so、mm-hmm. it's actually very walkable. Yeah, that was amazing for it. Transportation is important. I want to be able to get around and see what I'm seeing because times when you have to take taxis, a your expenses are going to rack up, and b it just doesn't feel like you're 
in the city. It feels like you're kind of outside of it and right. stepping away from it. So like one city where I took no public transportation, oh, we did take a day, was um, Beijing. Okay. We did a tour and the entire time we had a driver taking us around and literally every time I got into the car, I knocked out also because I was on a lot of uh, allergy medicine. The air quality was really messing with me and my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so transportation mm -hmm. is obviously a good thing, right? Um, your fourth country would be which country? Um, Rome was interesting. So Rome was kind of a calamity that ended up working out. Mm -hmm. And when I tell it, it doesn't usually sound like it could even be on a best. Uh -huh. So ultimately that trip was the first trip that I took after living in Japan and backpacking. Okay. And you've what, been back in the States. I've been back in the States. So I got back in the States in like April of 2013. Right. And then I didn't actually go to Rome until June of like 2015 so right because I remember you were mm -hmm. choosing um you got stuck yeah but like what led to that vacation is that backpacking I made the decision I'm going to do 30 countries by 30 right and then over a year goes by and I don't go anywhere right and so I was at it like a point in my life where I'm like, man, I'm just not accomplishing anything I want to do. Mm -hmm. I set this goal. I told myself it's totally doable. Right. And then I didn't do anything. Right. Were so, you worried at that point? Like, were you worried? Like, did it bother you? Um, yes and no. I was worried, not necessarily even about missing out on the 30 by 30, just not seeing any movement toward any goal in my life. Okay. Which was like, it was super stressful and... I needed a trip. Right. So I told myself, I'm going to go on my dream trip. I'm going to London. I've just been wanting to go there for just all, most of my life. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm going to take a flight on standby because I work for the airline, so it's going to be non-rev. I hadn't non-revved before. I actually hadn't even flown on that job yet. So going overseas was kind of a big deal and I thought well what if I don't make it because what if a flight is full so I'm right. not even going to book my hotel until I get there which meant that everything was going to be a little bit up in the air right. which is super stressful for like a type A planner like me. Mm -hmm. Well I leave Vegas I get to South Carolina on what you or yeah US Airways back in the day. Wow. I know right. and I'm there I'm ready to get on this flight and then they make an announcement Excuse me, it looks like we're oversold by about 19 seats. <laughs> <laughs> Just a smidge. Yeah. Just a little bit. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Right. So I walk up to the counter, which is fun when you're like standby, especially as an employee, because they're kind of weird about it. They're like, we've got real passengers to help. We don't care about you. <laughs> you're like, well, hey, can you get me on? Right. So I asked, like, what am I supposed to do? They said, well, there's no way you're getting on this flight, which I appreciate the blunt honesty at that point. Then they mentioned, here's what we can do. We're going to move you, put you on a plane up to Philadelphia. There's a flight going to London tonight. I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds fine. So now, mind from Vegas to South Carolina, mm -hmm. South Carolina then to Philly. Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. Now, thank goodness I only had a carry-on with me. Now, this is... less than now. Yeah. Team this backpack. was... So your team carry-on? Mm -hmm. Yes. All the way. 100%. I... I would cry if I had to check my bag. I've had a meltdown over bag checking before. Okay, so you're going to Philly. So I get there, and I'm in the airport. The flight's going out at like 9 p.m. Uh -huh. I'm there. Everyone starts boarding. I'm like, okay, this is my time. I'm going to go to London. This is going to be the trip I've been hey. waiting for. All of the uh, confirmed passengers have boarded. So those are the people that I, like outright paid for their tickets. Then you have eight standbys, including myself. Uh -huh. They're calling them up little by little, saying, hey, we have seats for you. Here's your ticket. You can get on the plane. It gets down to me and one other person sitting in the terminal. I'm like, okay, they're calling everyone. We're going to make this. That person gets called up. They get their ticket. They go. Then it gets to me. And the gate agent isn't looking at me. He's like, someone walks <laughs> over, says something to him. You, through you. Yes. <laughs> and then finally he looks up and says, that was our last seat. Like, oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> it's 9 p.m. I'm in Philadelphia. What am I doing here? And so after the plane leaves, I walk up I'm like, what do I do? Right. Because 
legitimately this is like the first trip I kind of taken by myself like that and it was my first time on standby he said well we can look at tomorrow's flights to see if we can get you to London uh -huh. however they didn't have like a bunch of flights they only had another evening one at 9pm right, because Philly is not a large it's not a large airport no so I thought, oh, I'm going to lose a day, but I'll still make it. So he pulls up the flight and he said, no, tomorrow doesn't look good either. I don't <laughs> think you're going to make it. <laughs> and you feel like you're in a hospital. You're like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> so thankfully, this is probably one of the nicest employees I have ever worked with. He actually pulls up a bunch of other trips to Europe and it probably looks like I'm distraught. And maybe that's why he was so helpful that he's like, well, you've got some options. You can go to Madrid, you can go to Barcelona, or you can go to Rome. Right. Tomorrow, not today. All the flights are gone today. Right, I'm stuck. stuck there. Yeah. You stuck. So I'm standing there, and it's like, well, this is a big decision to make right now, but I've got to make it because he's going to move me onto this flight, and that's that. So I decide, well, I've always wanted to go to Rome, so I'm, I've got a backpack. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Rome. Mm -hmm. And then what I did for the night is I just got a hotel and I started researching things to do in Rome uh -huh. and just like re-engineering my trip and then looking up a hotel. Mm -hmm. But obviously the fear was in me that I might not make my flight. So I thought I'm not going to pay for anything until I know I can make it. So had you paid for anything for London? Then? I hadn't. Oh. I was literally just going to show up and figure it all out. Wow. And so, Which is not normal for you because you don't do that. No, but I realized that things happen as they're supposed to happen because had I gotten to London and had to figure it out, it might not have been the experience and I wouldn't have been with the people that made London so amazing, like yourself the first time. Don't I get a big head. Better. Man, last time I give you props <laughs> on a trip. <laughs> I did it. I was there. Go on. So... But it wouldn't have been the same experience. So I got to spend like the day in Philadelphia. I went to go see the Liberty Bell and um, Liberty Hall. I didn't make it to see the Statue of Rocky and that I feel like was a missed opportunity. Oh, so that night you left the airport? Yeah, got a so hotel. So you seeing all these at nighttime? No, I stayed at a hotel that night. My flight wasn't until like 6 p.m. the next day. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, you know, no. like I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm about to see this city. I went to Liberty Hall at, at like night. 10 p.m. Talking about neck you're not there? Right. No, I I had I got a good night's sleep and researched that night, woke up and thought, well, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to get on a train, go explore Philadelphia because I'm not squandering this day of vacation time. Mm -hmm. And then got to the airport. Thankfully, I was I got on my plane to Rome and literally right before the wheels left, I went ahead and booked my hotel mm -hmm. and I got this cute little um, bed and breakfast that was down the street from the Vatican. So like, what did oh. you book through? Expedia, booking, the website? How would you do it? I'm a consistent booking.com booker. Okay. And so you're number two, level two? I am, yes. I had started looking at hotels.com, and I think prices are really about the same, and I do like the hotels.com, like, seventh night free. They do do that. That is a nice feature. It is, but I just feel like you have to dedicate yourself to one, and I feel like the prices are just a little bit better on booking.com. I wish they would give a night's free, though. That would be nice. I don't yeah. understand it. Like, the first off, there's only two levels of booking. And I don't know if they really give you a true value for being a repeat customer in the same way that Hotels.com does. So I've kind of been considering, like, switching it up. And now I'll check everywhere. Yeah, because I think you should check well. I just, I don't know if they have earned my, like, my brand loyalty. Well, at this point, you have brand loyalty, though. I do, but I don't know if they've earned it, which means I need to start like branching out. Right, so that means booking.com. Yes, from this podcast, you should really work through like people who like consistently book through you. Like right. Me and her. It's the truth. You should. Definitely. So I get to Rome and I'm like figuring things out. And thankfully, like I have a good group of friends that at home I was mentioning everything that was happening like hey I'm not making it to London and I think what's weird is that I guess other people in that situation would have just turned around and gone home because the reaction that I was getting from people is like you did what you just got on a plane and went somewhere else I was like well yes I've already taken the time off work I scrounged up what little money I had I'm out here <laughs> I'm making this happen so you end up in Rome and like even with that tumultuous start, it continued to be a little tumultuous because I was like in a new job and like entry level and I had like no money to my name. So I think I showed up after like getting my hotel with like two hundred dollars or no, okay. maybe like one hundred and fifty if I'm being so real you decided honest. to travel 
with Stand no money. Stand by internationally with $150. I know. In hindsight, like Sounds that's... Crazy. Yeah, it does. I wouldn't maybe do it again. Really? Even with the level of experience you have traveling, you would rather not travel with 100 you don't think you would do it with i mean i say i wouldn't do it again but i actually did do it again <laughs> okay i did i had another trip like that too yeah but that has to be recent was it recent relatively thailand part two. Oh, but we were all there so it wasn't like we were yeah. gonna let you drown no it was it was a little bit better but i had gotten there and so i got the rome card or the roma card mm -hmm. and it covered transportation again it covered entry into like the coliseum uh -huh. And um, the Borghese Museum. I said it wrong the first time when I, I asked someone. I was like, oh, I'm trying to go to the Borghese Museum. She's like, you mean the Borghese Museum? And I was like, well, yes, clearly that's what I meant. That I don't, museum. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm I wasn't able to make it to that one because you have to make an appointment. So that is something to take into consideration if you want to go make your appointment like two days in advance. Kind of like the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam how you have to book it ahead of time. You can't just like show up to that museum and walk in. Heineken as well. Uh, it's a real, oh yes. Because we couldn't do yeah, it. I missed so that in Rome, how was the public transportation? It was good. It's, I don't know, it, it feels like a very small city. So it's literally like two lines and across, oh, okay. which made it really easy. But still it's nice being able to just hop on trains and go. I didn't really take any buses. There were some things that were underwhelming. Like I did take a shuttle from the airport in and my first thought is we passed by something. I was like, oh, is that like a, um, a replica or a smaller version of the Coliseum? Uh -huh. And I wish I hadn't asked that out loud because the driver turned to me and they're like, that's the Coliseum. Ah! <laughs> I just, you know, when you make it up in your mind right. and you like see movies like Gladiator, you're like, this is some grand building. And it's not to say it's not, but I just had like a different scale and scope in my mind right. that when I saw it, I was like, oh, oh, yeah. It's great, great. Coliseum's great. Huge. <laughs> That's man. what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wondering. It's like Stonehenge. Okay, so how was the food? Because the pasta is supposed to be bar none. Um, I mean, it's Rome, Italy, Italian. Yeah. I wasn't overwhelmed by, like, the pizza. It was good. Okay. But, like, oh, I had the best eggplant parmesan. Like, that was phenomenal. And then the, um, the gnocchi, which I hadn't had before, okay. was really good. Things there, like, their sauces are so fresh. Right. There's just, like, a... Um, it's a different flavor. I would almost say when going, you have to like disengage yourself from what you thought Italian food was because right. here, like any food we have is just a recreation of a recreation. Mm -hmm. Whereas there, you're just really tasting it authentically. And if you're thinking it's just going to taste like what you had at home, but like Right, because it's very simple ingredients there. It's literally olive oil, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. That's but, it, simmer. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so fresh. And so that was... That was great, but like the food wasn't even really one of the highlights, particularly because I was like super impoverished that I was eating like. <laughs> that's super impoverished. <laughs> that's how that's I felt. <laughs> I mean, one way or the other, you still got to the same amount of no money. <laughs> but I had. Um, this, this really went well with your. I only eat once a day. <laughs> it totally worked out because I just really deprioritized food. So in the morning, I would eat breakfast at the hotel, which I'm like, ooh, that was a godsend that I stayed at a bed and breakfast <laughs> otherwise. I'm like, okay, this pasta, can I get it to go? I'm just going to like throughout the day just have like one noodle <laughs> just to keep me going. But and then like skip lunch and either do like a late lunch or an early dinner and just call it a day. And right. But then you make like small exceptions, like, oh, I've got to get gelato. I'm not going to come to Italy and not have gelato, which was awesome. So did you do any of the tours there? Did you, because it didn't come in a package? Um, I didn't, well, I did one tour. So I did an evening tour of the Vatican, mm -hmm. which I loved. I totally recommend doing an evening tour because during the daytime, it's crowded, it's hot. Because mm -hmm. I went in June and I was dressed for London so mind you, London weather is like a good 15 degrees cooler without like the intense humidity. Right. So I had on like tights and jeans and sweaters and nothing underneath that I could just take off the sweater. 
Plus, when you're going into a lot of the uh, Catholic churches, you can't have your shoulders showing. You、yeah. can't have like your legs showing. So I'm out there like layered to the hilt in hot garments, thinking, "Well, I wish I would have thought about this one a little bit. Just really made my wardrobe a little bit more versatile." Right. Something I've learned to do now, but、um, literally forgot your question. So tours, because I know you you did、oh, the night、tours. tour, that again, and then did you do the day tours? Um, yes, <laughs> like yes. I was in the Colosseum,、uh-huh. and I wasn't on a tour initially. <laughs> I was just kind of walking around, and it's like really cool. It's very old, but it's also just like an old building if you don't have context. Right. And so I happened to hear someone mentioning. Well, here's why there's a crucifix here, and telling stories about、uh, the Colosseum、I、was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. So I wander closer, and it does happen to be a tour guide talking to his tour group, and then they he's getting to the end of his story, but he starts walking away, and I think, well, I, I mean, I started this story, I kind of want to hear how it finishes, <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna walk with him, right? Just like a few steps, like hang out,、right. and then once the story ends, I'm gonna go about my way. But then he goes into another story, and I was like, well. That's actually a really good start that you've、right. just begun, like about crucifixions in the Colosseum. I was like, oh, I wouldn't have known about that. So then I'm just like sitting there, and I see he kind of looks over at me, and I'm not going to make eye contact because we both know what's <laughs> happening here, and that's that I've joined their tour at no cost. And I pay. So I just look over, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and. I just walk with them throughout the coliseum. And he didn't stop and try to kick you out. No, I think that would have been awkward for everyone involved. Like, the people on the tour would have been like, "What's going on?" So he's just、right. like side eyeing me. And I was like, well, did you not- tip him at least? I mean, I think at that point I probably had like fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good job. So I di- I didn't tip him. Right. But he has my eternal gratitude and appreciation. <laughs> If I knew what tour company was, I would totally give a shout out right now. <laughs> But obviously, I didn't have the tour information because I wasn't actually officially on it. Right. Close to it, but、yeah. not on it. I was like tour adjacent. So did you do that with a lot of tours? Did you just jump on other people's tours? Okay, so I tried to do it on another tour because I realized <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is like an option, not、yeah. an option I would take because tour guides deserve their money. So if you do it, definitely tip them at least. Right. But I was walking with like another group, and I realized that apparently tours have gotten smart. So now <laughs> they give out microphones and、right. they give you headphones. Right. So you just have one person on a mic, and then the headphones. I was like,、well, I can't hear them. It sounds like they're whispering. And so I think, could I move up closer to the tour guide? And I kind of started it, and I was like, this is real bold. Like, this is a different level of boldness to try and walk up right <laughs> next to the tour guide. Just walk with them. You forgot to give me my headset, sir. Oh my goodness! I should have tried that. Yeah,、um, I was at the. I think you left me, but yeah, yeah. Like, bring me the other headset, please. <laughs>、right? Well, or just speak louder. So that was the only tour I like joined. So I did the Vatican tour and my unofficial Colosseum tour,、uh-huh. and then the other that I'd like to consider a tour that I did, which was probably one of my favorite things I did in Rome, was a self-guided angels and demons tour. Right. So、um, we. We read the Da Vinci Code at the same time, right? We did. We read the Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and Dan Brown had one other book, like Digital Fortress or something. Something. It was about like out of the genre. Yeah. Either way, the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons I really enjoyed. And then I thought, oh my goodness, Angels and Demons takes place here. Right. So I downloaded it onto、uh, my phone, and what I did is like one night I just read a few chapters in, and I thought. Oh, it's this here. I should go see these statues. Right. So then, in the morning, I went to go see the statues, read over the chapters again where、mm-hmm. it took place, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to read this entire book today and just take myself to each location. Right. So literally, just reading a few chapters, seeing where I needed to go, hopped on a train, got there, and then read more. And just really got to enjoy it that way because those books have a lot of historical context. They do. They Even, reference a lot. They do. Even though it's not necessarily like a true story, it was really interesting for me. And so I just created my own little tour. So it was awesome.、Um, well, let's move on because Rome was nice.、Mm-hmm. Food was good. Transportation、mm-hmm. was good. Because we're tying in the three things that you cited you like about it,、mm-hmm. and then you planned it on the go, but you were able to. So、yeah. your fifth. 
favorite place that you've ever been to in the 30 countries that you visit would have been? Cuba. Cuba, which is completely different than the last four. Totally different experience right. because it takes you so far out of your element. But so we went on a nine day. Was it a nine day or 10 day trip? I honestly thought it was 12, but I mean, I could be wrong. It might have been. Either way, we went in 2016. 15. 15? Yeah. Okay. So we went in two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We went in 2015 when it was still like the borders were closed between Cuba and the U.S. So you literally had to fly to Cancun and then fly into Havana and ask them not to stamp your passport because... But you know the crazy thing is, now learning about the laws and what it was, we still booked the tour. So we could have just... I don't think you could have flown in straight, though. That was the thing. You couldn't fly in straight. You couldn't, no. But because we booked the tour, we would have technically been within the parameters of the nine guidelines of visiting the country, right? True, but I don't think they had direct flights. However... We weren't going for educational purposes. So no. the tour, the thing about that is that I don't think, like, Cuba was fine with Americans coming in. It was America not fine with us going to Cuba. Right, which is weird. Yeah. I was like, mm, I guess, if you So care. Havana, gorgeous city. It is. So we got there. I, it, it, like, took you out of the world that you were in. Yeah. Because, first of all, no cell reception, no cell service, and. No oh, ATMs. No ATMs. The money you came with is the money that you had for your entire time. True. So you, they do a one-for-one one conversion and then a little bit extra because it's from dollars. Yes. Yeah, so if you do go, convert to Canadian dollars or euro. Oh, that, that's smart. Yeah. I think but I feel like you lose, you lose the same amount of money because no converting to either, you have to you mm-hmm. lose. Yeah. But... I think that was probably the only struggle is maybe not bringing enough money. Now it wasn't on like Rome dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, then we stayed in like the Casa Particulars, which are essentially just like bed and breakfast in people's homes, and your like your breakfast is actually made by the uh, the homeowner. And that was, I mean, the food was good. The food was really good. Fried eggs are nice. I'm not a fruit person, so the fruit was getting a bit No. I wasn't about the fruit, but, like, the day I got the whole fish with the face and everything, that fish was super good. This is good. That's an important point to note, though. All of the countries you go to, because you are a pescatarian, and at that point I think you were a vegetarian, Mm -hmm. so a lot of the times you can't even eat the cuisines that are natural to the country. Like, Cuba is pork. Maybe in Rome, a lot Italy, they don't it's because not a it's so heavy. pasta heavy. I could, I could get down there. Yeah. So Cuba, why why was it one of your tops? Um, it was just so unlike anything I had ever done, and even have done since. Right. You're you're in a unique environment. You're learning about history. The architecture's interesting. The cars were amazing. True. You're looking at all of these antique 1950s cars. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is that the families are like, oh, this car's been in my family for like three generations. I'm tired of it. It's like, you don't know how much this car is worth. Right, but even if they're tired of it, they can't even get rid of it. No. And it was was really interesting because it gave you a lot of appreciation for your life that you're living now because... I live a great life, even if the year before I was in Rome with $100. And, but also, it lets you see just such a different perspective. So, I mean, the island is beautiful. The ocean was wonderful. Mm-hmm. It, the water was, like, clear and crystal. Um, it also made you very resourceful. So, like, what you had is what you kept. True, and there's, like, a lot of things that you give up because there aren't... Like, if you have a particular water you like, you can't have that. It's just their water, which is probably why we dehydrate it. Oh, yeah, because that water had a flavor to it. And so I just stopped drinking water on, like, day three. Wow, that's smart. Yeah, but I was sweating pretty profusely. I mean, it caught up with me. Obviously. Um, It was interesting, though. So we, we were on the tour. We were having a great time. The food was good. It gave you a lot to think about. It was really interesting in the perspective of, like, what you had going. Like, you didn't have sunglasses. Your sunglasses broke, and you're just walking around with the sun in your eyes. Right. You're in, like, 100-degree, bright-ass, sunny weather, just, like, 
fix it, Jesus. <laughs> but you're making it through. The food was good. Yeah. We didn't have a transportation issue because we were on a tour. Oh, and our tour guide. You know what? A lot of what made Cuba amazing was how good she was. So, like, the first day, what do you really want to do here? I just want to salsa every night. Right. That's just what I want to do. And I think in my mind, hyperbole is fine. I'm used to how I hyperbolize things. And she's like, okay, so they want to salsa every night. That's exactly what she heard, and that's exactly what she delivered. So even we were, like, dog tired. We had woken up at 6 in the morning. We had done stuff all day, and it's nighttime. And I was like, yeah, you know, I think I just want to go to sleep. Just dancing every night. And, I'm, and the thing is that you're not naturally... Salsa is not our thing. We're not good at it. Gosh. So if you're not good at it, to do it every night is exhausting. Plus, she made us take lessons. It the was lessons just... were actually really helpful because the first <laughs> night, I was like, if you spin me one more time with the amount of rum I've drank, I will projectile vomit on everything around me. <laughs> okay, so uh, top two things that you would recommend for? Um, for Cuba, definitely Trinidad and Trinidad was amazing. Ooh, the second city we went to, Vin- Vinales. Yeah, I cute. loved the uh, the coffee field. I thought that just was a, a serene day in nature. Okay. So maybe all the trips that I love the most are a mixture of, like, city and then a bit of serenity and just tempered. Wow. Um, that is all we have. Top five. Does. Top five. Thank you for um, watching our Flirting with Travel podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode on top five of Lexi's 34 and 30. Okay, cheers.